Welcome into K State Online. I am Mason Voth, joined by Drew Galloway, and we are here for our weekly football recruiting update. Handful of uh, notable guys to get you updated on. Names that we haven't talked about in one of these videos yet, and uh, two guys that are going to be helped down the road, but one that is an active linebacker safety hybrid that is in uh, the the transfer role right now. He's a junior college transfer that K-State is kind of hot on the trails of with a couple of other Big 12 schools that have jumped in recently. So let's just start there because I think people are still interested in how this coming year's roster is going to get better. And uh, that kind of plays into what's going on with Cade McMahon here. He played at Tyler Junior College, which K-State over the last handful of years has had a really nice relationship with getting specifically defensive players from Tyler Junior College to come up to K-State. And uh, this is a guy that he was committed to TCU, decommits, opens things back up, and K-State and Iowa State both in line to get visits this week. And actually, Iowa State uh, started on Wednesday. Yeah, I believe the Iowa State visit is wrapping up kind of as we're recording right now. And it is interesting because K-State has kind of been prone to this late junior college ad the last handful of years. And with uh, John Ross May, or yeah, John Ross May from uh, Lenore Ryan choosing to go to Utah State where he could probably start instead of K-State where he'd be kind of in the backup role. It makes sense to go for another linebacker. And like we said, it's more of like a luxury ad. And Caden McMahon is uh, a four by three Juco player, so he has a red shirt available to him as well. And he's a guy that he can come in, provide some depth at the outside linebacker spots, because like I've said, like I like the depth at the outside linebacker spots, but it's just two young guys and Asa Newsom and Cameron Salas, who Cameron Salas has only played in one game. Asa Newsom played in four games and then got injured and was out for the rest of the season. So if you can bring in another guy that has a little bit more experience, has played a full season, Yes, it is a little bit later in the game, so it might take a little bit to get Cade McMahon up to speed. But if they can get him up to speed, it's a spot where K-State can really use somebody else that can be able to see the field. Yeah, and it's just it, you can never have too many guys, uh, really in a lot of these defensive positions, because you never know how it's going to work out. As we saw last year, K-State lost multiple linebackers in you know a pretty short span of each other. And uh, we already know that they feel pretty deep at safety. So wherever you you need to shoe him in, uh, you do seem to have some built up depth. But it doesn't hurt to add more guys when you have that ability right now, like K State. And we've talked about this numerous times already this off season. But it's good for them to be in a position where almost all of these spots they're not having to do it to just get something done. They are doing it because they need they they have the luxury to go out and try and do it. And this would probably fall under that same category yeah this is the category of we don't necessarily have to do this because i would imagine that the coaches probably feel good about if austin moore desmond pernell need a blow to bring in like a cameron salas or nasa newsome but it's somebody where at the at specifically at linebacker last year, K-State just had such a revolving door of injuries that you probably would want another guy that you're like, okay, we feel comfortable with him coming in and playing. The Tyler Junior College connection, if K-State gets uh, Cade McMahon as well, is just going to be a wild like just thing to really think about going forward. Of it just seems like every time that they go after any defender from Tyler Junior College, that like K-State's probably going to land them if they get Kid McMahon as well. Yeah, that, that's that's why right now I'm, I'm not assuming anything else will happen. I know that Iowa State and Houston are involved, and obviously the visit to Iowa State's going down. But, I mean, Tyler Juco guys, they just end up at K-State when the Cats want them. So we'll see uh, where that thing moves on and uh, the visit uh, in the near future for K-State uh, so they'll try and get things done. Because by your count, how many scholarships do you think K-State has left to work with? It can always be a little fuzzy in football trying to determine uh, which guys are there, which ones aren't. Basketball, a lot easier when there's only a handful of guys on the team. But by your count, how many open spots do you think K-State has to work with? I think K-State has four spots. 
like a linebacker and often be just done that because uh, they really like rock. So I think that's getting done for this and the rush. All right, so some uh, technical difficulties for Drew there. Uh, we'll try and, and get him back in. All right, so Drew's back with us now after uh, some some minor technical issues there. Uh, people probably didn't hear. So how many open scholarship spots do you think K-State is working with right now? Uh, so my guess is probably between three and four. Like, I, I, it's, it's never like a clear cut, like this is how many K-State has left. Uh, but my guess is that they either have three or four remaining and probably will only spend probably two more uh, for the rest of this like summer, spring kind of window where they're adding guys to the roster. I think that ideally they'd add another linebacker, an offensive lineman, and then they really like rewarding walk-ons. And I think that it's a good thing too, that if you can get some walk-on scholarships, I think that that just keeps the, the walk-on program in a, healthier spot so if they can add a couple guys and then get guys to be put on scholarship i think that that would probably be the perfect 85 roster that case 85 man roster the case would have all right we got two more guys to get to that honestly like if we're if we're talking about what people might be interested in i think you could go either way because these are two fascinating guys one because there's four star status here. It comes at a pretty, you know, exciting position of receiver. And then on the other side, it's yet another St. Louis kid. So I will let you pick, Drew. Who do you want to talk about next? Either Tristan Abram or Jalen Cooper. I uh, will talk about uh, Tristan Abram next because I, I, I think that he is really intriguing because K State has been recruiting him for over a year now at this point, uh, but didn't end up pulling the trigger and offering him until a couple weeks ago. And I think that you can really tell how much he valued the relationship that K-State has built with him, even though they hadn't offered a scholarship because the offer that he has isn't very old. And he was in the process of scheduling some official visits beforehand. And he ends up immediately scheduling an official visit to K-State that'll take place May 31st through June 2nd. So I think that, while Casey might not be in the lead still or might be, but they might be in the top contention. They're the team that's really soaring and on the rise for Tristan Abram. And, and it's like you said, it's just another St. Louis kid where uh, they're really starting to kind of flex their muscle a little bit in St. Louis with how this, how this cycle is going after adding Dylan Duff in on Leo Almanza already got Will Kim, Will Kim nah, already in the game and probably in the top two for Lucas Allgaier, they're really working it in St. Louis right now. And I think that that's really fun to watch because St. Louis has been an area that K-State has really tried to really get into. And now you're seeing the fruits of the labor in this cycle. Yeah. And you see the offers there, numerous other power four squads out there and uh, you know, whatever UConn tries to claim themselves as <laughs> now. Uh, but I won't disparage UConn because uh, they just gave K-State a quarterback. So kind of interesting. Also, if you want a fun fact about Tristan Abram and the school he goes to, he goes to Christian Brothers College. Uh, what I found uh, about the CBC, the cadets, uh, they up until a certain point, they were an actual college, and then they decided they would scale things back, and now they're a high school. But they had, up until 1930, when they, I think, stopped being a college, they had like one of the best soccer programs in the United States before like it was really organized elsewhere. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was fascinating because I was trying to, you know, as I do for all these, I was trying to find a logo for the, the, the high school. So I'm trying to confirm and everything. And the first one that pulls up takes me to a Wikipedia page and it takes me to CBC men's soccer. I was like, why would a high school soccer program have their own Wikipedia page? And so then I read it a little bit. And it explained to me that like that's like a, a legendary soccer program before soccer really blew up in the United States. So uh, shout out to Tristan Abram. Uh, Christian Brothers College, always been a football school. Just seems to be changing uh, yes. which version of football now. Yeah, they're an so. absolute football powerhouse in St. Louis. 
Well, uh, we'll move on now and go to another Texas target. Plenty of these in the world of K-State football recruiting now. And this is an exciting look for K-State with Jalen Cooper uh, because he's a top 150 uh, recruit in the on 300 rankings, a four-star. Uh, he has four-star status from rivals as well, 24-7. He's kind of on the fringe of that right there. But industry-ranked uh, four-star, pretty high up there from Cibolo, Texas. And you see plenty of other Big 12 schools in the mix uh, because if you look at the on three RPM, there are two other schools at 10.5%. Right now, that'd be Oklahoma State and Kansas. So the, the Cowboys and Jayhawks were also in on him, as well as SMU, Houston, and Baylor. So what can you tell us about Jalen Cooper? Because to me, this is a new guy on my radar. Yeah, he's kind of a hot prospect right now with how his recruitment has gone. And I think that some of it has to do with, I believe he is a track athlete. And I wonder how much of that is kind of stemming from that. Because he has some really good uh, numbers uh, in the 40-yard dash as well. He runs a 4-4-2, which seems to be kind of like the the trend that K-State is on with Matthew Middleton, where they just want to get really fast receivers and just kind of see where everything goes from there. And, and it really does seem like a Big 12 battle with, with, with a random ACC school and SMU. Uh, because he has official visits to SMU, K-State, KU, Baylor, and Houston. All on the docket. Uh, the SMU visit begins uh, May seventeenth, and then or and then he'll be at K State May thirty first, and then Kansas uh, June seventh, Baylor June fourteenth, and Houston June twenty first. So his recruitment is really on the rise, and, and I think that he's somebody to really kind of watch out for because this kind of this visit kind of got done in the shadows where. He was somebody where I didn't really know a ton about him until the official visit got scheduled. And now kind of just seeing where K-State stands with him and to immediately kind of get a, an official visit because he's another guy where his offer isn't very old. And K-State has really kind of been the, the trending team in this direction. But I, I have some pause a little bit about K-State's chances, though, because when it's a Texas kid and he has three official visits scheduled to Texas schools, that that's probably where my pause would come in. Yeah. You're going to have to do some, some serious work there. I mean, build, build out the, the path for the people watching here. Then if, if you were in charge of trying to sell Jalen Cooper, a Texas kid with a ton of Texas school interest, how do you sell him on leaving the state and coming to K-State? And and who do you use to pitch that? Because as we know, K-State has a couple of Texas wide receivers in that room now. Yeah, I think that you use kind of like a combination of Trey Davis, Jaquise Bradley Demps on, hey, like we've had, we have Texas kids at wide receiver right now. Uh, K-State had Malik Knowles before. But I think that you're really pitching the offense and not just Avery Johnson in the offense. You're probably pitching like, hey, we already have our quarterback in Dylan Duff. Like the, this is the guy that's going to be throwing you the ball as well. Because I mean, timeline with Avery Johnson probably doesn't line up perfectly to where like a 2024 wide receiver where you could be like, Hey, we have Avery Johnson. He will be throwing you the ball two or three years. This one is a little bit tougher from that standpoint, but you're just pitching Dylan Duff and how well he probably that, how well he did in the elite 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 11 regional competition a few weeks ago where he was one of the top standouts. So it's kind of a little bit of that. And then just, I think that you hammer home that if you can get to Dallas, you can get to Manhattan really easily. So it's not like super far. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's, it, it's not that, that big of a deal uh, to, to do all that. So I think it'll be interesting to see, because like you mentioned, uh, you know, with the Texas guys, you can get a, a better read and, and feel maybe a little bit more confident if there are some other schools in that mix of the official visit status that are not inside the state. But there's a lot of similarities in K-State's kind of the outlier right there, but certainly something to be interested in. And again, not to try and dismay anybody by this, because like you said, this is a pretty fresh offer and K-State did snag one of the official visits. So that's that's not a... A, a bad thing and we'll see I guess how it works out for K-State moving forward for a really impressive recruit top 150 overall top 20 receiver and it's funny that just highlights how strong the state of Texas is with talent where yeah. you can be a, a top 150 kid 
And uh, you're outside the top 20 in your state. He's number 24 in the state of Texas. So must be nice to be down there. Yeah, it, you talk about that with uh, Jalen Cooper. I think it was last year when Jaquise Bradley Dempsey and Trey Davis were in the top 300 that they were in like the number, they're in the 40s in the state of Texas. Like Texas football recruiting <laughs> yeah. is absolutely wild. Like you're, you're with it. If you can see a high school campus, like they probably have a, a power for a prospect. Yeah. Uh, so last year, just for an example, Trey Davis was 224th nationally and the number 37 receiver in the country, according to on three, uh, he was number 36 in the state of Texas. So, uh, <laughs> there, there you have it. Uh, he was, and he had four stars from three of the four recruiting services. Uh, let me blow your mind on Trey Davis here. Actually, this won't blow people's mind. Uh, Trey Davis, uh, a 92 rated four star from on three, number 224 in the country, a 90 rated four star from 24 seven, an 84 star from ESPN, and then a 553 star from Rivals, which uh, prevented him from getting to his industry ranked four star status. So, that's, yeah, and, and uh, that's. That's one too, where because of how the on three industry ranking is now, and it's not a complete 25% across the board, all rivals had to do was like make him like a five, six or a five, seven. And, and he's probably a, an, an industry ranked four star, but the five, five just tanked where his industry ranking was. Yeah. The five, five is the, we've put no work into this at all for you. We're just, here's your three stars move along. The, so. that that's the they went to a power four school five yes. five move along yeah. yeah no that's uh that's that's how that worked out so uh that's just a, a little bit of ranking stuff that people probably don't ultimately care about right now uh because all you need to know is that trey davis and jacques bradley dems were highly thought of by numerous other services and uh, k-state locked them down a couple of texas wideouts which they will try and do their best to try and come through uh, with Jalen Cooper. So that is this week's K-State football recruiting update. We'll be back again next week with some more updates as we get closer to official visits starting up uh, really in a big way for the high school kids in the class of 2025. And who knows, maybe by next week we'll have a little bit more clarity on a guy like Caden McMahon, the Tyler Junior College transfer that K-State is set to host soon. So for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thanks for watching K-State Online.